Hi, my name is Gary Guth and I'm a bagpipe teacher. The, uh, the uh, tune that I was playing just now um, is a 2-4 march. Um, it was written uh, by uh, Pipe Major Robertson uh, of the Scots Guards. It's called the Scots Guards March Through Jerusalem. You know, the 2-4 march um, is a conundrum to a lot of bagpipers. And uh, one of the reasons it is, is that uh, it's rather intimidating because if you look at the music, um, you have all of these clusters of notes um, and you have the dotted 16th and the 32nd. And that confuses a lot of people. Um, and so the easy way out is not to learn any of the 2-4 marches. Well, the 2-4 competition march, uh, the 2-4 four-part march is used in competition. Um, personally, I think it makes bagpipe boys into bagpipe men. Um, this is um, an incredible tool uh, to use to develop um, your personal, uh, you know, your personal playing as a as an individual performer. So. What we're gonna do, you know, I could I could sit here and I could I could play I could play through it like this. I could say now you try, and I could play the next part. And I could say now you try it again. But but the truth of the matter is, is that as a bagpipe teacher, my job is to make you an accomplished player. Okay, that means that you could open up any any tune in any book and pull your practice chainer out and play it. That's the goal of bagpipe lessons. The goal isn't to be a, a student for the rest of your life. The goal is to become an accomplished player. Okay, so what, what, what we're going to do, if, if uh, attached to this video, okay, um, uh, if you look down there, um, there's a couple places um, for sheets for you to print out. The first uh, sheet I'd like you to print out is the tune. Uh, the tune is the uh, Scots Guards March Through Jerusalem. Uh, this is a, a tune out of Scots Guards Book 1. If you have that book, you could certainly pull that book out and stuff. Um, if you print it, um, we're going to write on the paper, so um, you may not want to uh, write in your Scots Guards book. Uh, but it is in the Scots Guards book on page 33. This is a tune probably that uh, not a lot of people play. I mean, it's one of those tunes that's, you know, hidden in the book um, as a tune written by Scots Guardsmen. So uh, we're going to use this tune to teach you how to develop a 2-4 march. Um, also um, attached to this uh, video is this sheet which is um, a prep sheet that I've created um, to iron out some of the technical problems um, in the piece. And, uh, but the first thing that we're going to use is this sheet, uh, the rhythm pattern sheet. Um, I, think, I think it's important that as a bagpiper, you know, this is a folk instrument. You know, folk instruments are taught by, by road and by imitation and so forth. Um, I'm a classical musician. Um, you know, I learned to read music and rhythm and stuff um, as I was learning piano and stuff. So, you know, when I came to the bagpipes, I didn't have a problem reading uh, the music. But I found in the last 40 some years of playing the bagpipe that a lot of bagpipers don't read rhythm at all. So, this would be a good uh, opportunity uh, for you to develop. Uh, that skill as well. Okay, so if, if um, I'll pause here for a second, if you'll print out those sheets, um, we'll get started. Okay, welcome back. Here we go. Okay, so the first thing I want you to look at is this rhythm pattern sheet. And um, if you're if you're reading the top, you know there, there's two kinds of rhythm patterns. There's duple patterns, which are divisible by two. And there's triple patterns, which are divisible by three. Um, what, what I do in counting rhythm is, is that I'll keep a beat. I'll go, here's my beat. And, you know, most bagpipe music, uh, you know, goes at a walking pace. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and four. And a one, a two, and three, a four, a one, a two, and three, a four, a one, two, three, a four, a one, a two, and three, a four, a one, two, a three, and four. See, it goes like that. 
Okay, so so that's our that's our pace. That's how we're going to go. Now, if you're looking at this sheet, uh, the first group of patterns um, all the way to the big double bar on line four, uh, those are all the duple patterns and uh, lines. Uh, the end of line four, five, and six are the triple patterns. So just to get just to go through it uh, as a um, as a review. Uh, just k k keep your eye on on that, and I'm going to show you how how to count them. Okay, so here's my beat. Ready, set, go. One, one, four. One, uh, one, three. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one e and two e and three e and four e and one e two e three e four e one a two a three a four a. Now, if you notice, you have uh, you have uh, verbal inflections within the rhythm to make the patterns work for you. You know, you can't say. Uh, one e and a two e and a one e two e three. I mean, it, it has to have a certain inflection. One e two e three e four e one a two a three a four. See that way. That way, you know, when you're performing these patterns, you know, you're always performing in the same way. Okay. So then, okay. So practice that. You know, I'll pause here for a second. Practice uh, going one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and and say practice saying the patterns. Um, I also have a um, I have a video uh, that I'll make uh, available uh, to you if you're interested. Uh, that's all about rhythm and meter, um, so we can go into more depth. Anyway, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the tune. So you take the tune right here, and what we're going to do is we're going to look for uh, the patterns uh, in the um, in the tune, the rhythm patterns in the tune. You know the thing that. The thing that intimidates people about the two-four march, the two-four competition march in particular, um, is the is the rhythm. Um, you know the rhythm uh, because it looks too complex. Okay, well the, the the if you notice the rhythm syllables that I have, one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a, those are sixteenth notes. Okay, and I don't have any syllables for thirty-second notes. So. If you remember your fractions in school, two four equals four eight. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, the Scots Guards march through Jerusalem, and we're going to we're going to divide it out in four eight time. That way we get syllables uh, for all of the melody notes. Okay, so when we define the rhythm on a two four march. Uh, we're defining the rhythm on the melody notes only. Okay, um, you know, think about think about uh, the melody notes are like vowel sounds in speech. Okay, the the um, grace notes and the doublings and stuff. Those are the consonants. Okay, and it's only the vowel sounds uh, that we put any duration. Uh, on when we when we speak or when we sing and so forth. Okay, so let's take it. Let's take it from the top now if you um, The first uh, in the first measure we only have two notes Okay, and we what we have is a dotted 16th and a 32nd. Okay that if you add all of that up That's equal to an eighth note. Okay, if you take uh, um uh, let's see the dotted eighth. The dotted eighth would be twenty-four thirty seconds, and then I had the the, the final uh, uh, thirty-second note there would be equal to eight. Okay, so so uh, we're going to divide that all the way down by four. So that's that would be beat four. Okay, so what we're going to do first of all is we're going to find all of the eighth notes in the measure. Okay, so. So um, the A, the G grace note on the low A is is beat four. So we're only going to put a number four underneath that. The beginning of any barred unit has a number before it, not a syllable. It has a number. Okay, so um, you're never going to have and three, or you know you're never going to have the and of three 
or and of two combine to be three. It doesn't work that way. It's always the number first. Okay, so okay, so it, we're looking at it. Uh, we're we're looking at it in the first very first measure. Um, that's a pickup beat because not all songs, not all tunes start on the first beat. Okay, so that's that's uh, beat four, and then the F doubling the F is is beat one. Okay, but we're counting in eighth note time, so that's equal to two beats. So that's one dash two. Okay, and then then uh, the G grace note on the E would be three. Okay, um, the next uh, eighth note would be on on the F, going to the high A. That's beat four, and then in the next measure, the low A is one. The F in that string is two, and then I've got the F half doubling. That's three dash four. Again, that's uh, uh, that quarter note is equal to two eighth notes. Okay, and then I have um, in the next measure on the high G I have one dash two, and the E is the and of two. Then I have three on the C doubling. Four on the E. I have uh, one on the A in the next measure. Uh, two on the E. Uh, three on the F. And four uh, on the low A. In the next measure on the F doubling, I have one dash two. And then I have uh, three on the E and four on the F. So if you can see my my what I did, can you see that? Okay, that's what yours should look like right now. Okay, now, so so w once you've defined where the eighth notes are in the bar, then you come back to the rhythm pattern sheet. And this is a do we're in a duple time, and most of what we're going to be using are going to be the one e two e three e four e or the one a two a three a four patterns. Okay, um, so so what you want to do is uh, is you want to identify. We're looking at duplets. Okay, so we're identifying the duplets. We're going one a two or one e two e three and so forth. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning. Um, Beat four, uh, the dot is on the first note, so that's four. Uh, okay, and then I got one dash two, and then beat three, the dot is on the th on the first note, so that would be a three. Uh, and then the dot, well, there's a typo um, on beat four. The um, the flag and the dot are on the same note on the high A. That's a misprint. Um, the the flag should be on the F. So that would be this is a four E because the dot is in the second position. Okay. So and then I have in the next uh, measure one. The dot's in the first position, so that would be one A. Uh, in the uh, B two, uh, the dot is in the second position, so that's two E. Okay, then I got three dash four, one and three, four, and then uh, one, two, three, the fourth measure over on the low A to the C, uh, that would be a one A, uh, and then another two E, three, four, A, uh, one dash two, and then the very fa uh, last pattern on that top line would be three, uh, four e. Okay, now what I'd like you to do, I'd like you to stop this video, okay, and I'd like you to take, I'd like you to take a few minutes and um, complete this. Okay, it might take take you more than a few minutes. Use the rhythm pattern sheet, um, and I can tell you first. I can tell you right now that the majority of the patterns are going to be one, a two e, three, a four e. I mean that kind of stuff. I'll just I'll tell you in advance, okay? But I'd really like you uh, to take a look at that and and so forth. If if in the meantime you'd like to fax, um, you want to fax your sheet to me so I can look at it. 
Um, you could certainly do that. Um, if you'd like to um, send me an email with an attachment, um, I'll be happy to look at it and so forth, okay? But uh, and give you some feedback. All right, but um, we don't want to take a whole video to do the whole tune because, you know, it's there's a lot of repetition in this tune. Okay, next we're going to show you um, what to do with that. Okay, goodbye.